so tonight I am going to paint a uh, assault intercessor using a paint scheme that was given to me by uh, if you're local, you know Payton. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you're not local, there's a man named Payton in southern Georgia who gave me this paint scheme. So there you go. Uh, we'll see how this how well this works. Yeah, that works. So there's the paint scheme. I'm gonna try to get this man to look like that as close as possible anyway. So here we go. Just gonna scoot that over there. All right. So I'm gonna start with the green. And I did some tests earlier. And I think what we're gonna go with here is Militarum green with Creed camo over top of it. That's uh, this the left half of the circle here. That's what we're gonna go for. So I'm gonna start with Militarum green. And I'm just gonna coat everything that this paint scheme says is green. And we'll go from there. So let's see. Painting off of a uh, painting off a an image is a little different than normal. Um, a lot, of, at least for me anyway. A lot of times I like to just kind of make decisions on the fly. Um, that's obviously not an option when you're painting from a picture. But it is also can definitely be a useful tool because you don't have to make decisions. And so if you can get something looking good in an image beforehand, then you can't make a wrong decision while you're painting that can screw everything up. So that's something to consider. So there's definitely positives and negatives to both styles. Um not having to come up with it, well, when someone else gives it to you, like in this case, not having to come up with the paint scheme is a nice break from normally having to come up with my own paint schemes. Um, Alright, so then, what else is green on this guy? His chest is green. The eagle is not green, but or the aquila rather is not green, but we're gonna go back over that with gold anyway. And I gotta be careful because his visor is not or his like face plate is not green, but the rest of his helmet is green. Oh except not. His his uh his mohawk is also not green. So this is actually kind of sketchy in here. It's okay though, I think we can make it work. Just gotta go slow. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do for the mohawk yet. I mean, rather. Well, yes, for the moment, but for the, the sort of off-white color, I may just end up leaving it this primer. Uh, and so if that's the case, I really need to be careful. Got a little green dot on the mohawk back here. See if I can clean that up as best as possible. That's better. Because if it's going to be uh, just the primer, then... Definitely, definitely can't get any dots or anything on it. Close enough. Right now, with the uh, the green and the white on this guy, he's kind of looking like a Buzz Lightyear type figure. But we won't be adding any purple to him, so that will not be the case going forward.
I just realized I just have a bunch of like bottles of paint strewn across the desk here. Let me move them. <laughs> there we go. That's better. My desk is a complete mess, but let's not give it away too easily. dude is in like a he's in a pose that's like just annoying enough to be annoying <laughs> if that makes any sense it's like not not the craziest pose that you would necessarily almost have to do sub assemblies but he's in a pose that like could be sub assemblies could be useful <laughs> But too late now. We're glued together, so. What color is the gun? Oh, it's white. Okay, so I gotta be a little more careful. That can be the silver part. <laughs> Legs are white. Uh, oh, the middle of the backpack is green can't see the rest of the backpack because my my only reference image is from the front but that's okay this can be one of the decisions that I wing and I'm gonna say that the rest of the backpack is white and just this part up here is green at least for now can always change down the line. Actually, I'm going to make the little side bits green also. These little thingies here. Leave the circle in the middle white and do the rest green. I don't know, man. I kind of like this giant spot of white here. That is a lot of green, actually. Or a lot of white, I mean, though. So I think you are actually correct. This does need to be green. With those pants back there being... Being white, that's going to be too much white. Let me give my paint a shake real quick. There we go. I'm going to do this part in green also. Of course I'm right, I designed the paint scheme. Well, I guess there's that, huh? Ooh, sketchy, sketchy. Okay. All right, I think that's everything that's going to be green. At least this first, uh, first pass of green here. Yep. Got the hands. Yep. All right. Good. So now I will. I'll just go straight into the next color, actually, because it's okay if they mix a little bit. So I'm going to go for some Creed camo and I'm just going to put it straight on top of this Militarum green. And we're going to see how this comes out. The testing made it look pretty good, but we'll see.
I think this is this color's got to be a really thin coat. So I think in a couple spots on the chest, I lost the olive a little bit too much. Still want the olive to shine through. I just need to be a little deeper. I'm not going to go for complete coverage necessarily with this one. Like I said, just so the olive sticks with us. So I'm going to do some spots thinner than others. Oh god. Got some green on this dang mohawk again. Close enough. Oh. I had it, and then I ruined it. Alright, we're repainting the mohawk. Confirmed. I've messed it up too much already. So just this part back here. You know, I've noticed something with the paint schemes off of Impcat, which is what this was made in. They never show purity seal colors. I always have to have to make that decision on my own. Which is fine, obviously, but they don't show them. Alright, so then I think I'll do the silver next. I'm going to do... Grey Knight Steel for this to start. I know, I know. Messed up the Mohawk. That's okay. We'll repaint it. It'll be fine. So, I'm just going to paint the teeth of the Chainsword. And then this, I guess, maybe the power supply of the chainsword. I don't know what this is exactly. Possibly the exhaust. We'll get these dots also while I'm here. And then I'm just going to get the pommel of the sword. I'm going to get some silver on the green that I just finished painting, like a boss. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to do the silver on the pistol here. This is a uh, something to notice on here. Um, if it'll focus, if you can notice, I'm not sure if it'll come out. But I'm not really painting all the way up to the lines of things uh, because I know I'm going to come back and ink it later, and so I don't need to be super particular about making sure the paint gets into all the nooks and crannies. 
as long as I have it on the raised bits, when I put the wash on it, that'll f the wash will flow into the cracks and make sure that that white doesn't show through. So, it doesn't really matter. And it just speeds up the paint job a little bit. Not having to worry so much about hitting every single spot. Alright, and I'm just going to do the... This thing. I've got all sorts of stuff just messing with my focus on the desk today. I'm going to do the bolts. This is what I assume is the bolt on the uh, gun here. And then the tip. The muzzle, I guess I should say. I'm not sure why I use the appropriate terms until getting to the the business end, but you know, whatever. Uh, and then I'm gonna do just for fun. I'm gonna do these two little squares, rectangles. Some, I guess, would be part of the site. Maybe. I'm not sure how two rectangles really helps you uh, helps you sight at all, but whatever. They're at the top of the gun, so I'm going to call them the sight. And I think that's it. That's silver. Yeah, it looks like it. Alright. So then, I'm going to go ahead and do the gold. Oh, no. There's a tiny little thing. that I missed this little connection on the face mask here is silver. There we go. Now I'm going to do gold. And looking at that, I am going to use Peridot Alchemy, or Peridot Alchemy, if you want to be American about it. And this is going to be my silver color, or my gold color, rather. Yikes. And that's the uh, the shoulder pad trim is the main part, and then the Aquila, and then some other details here and there. Should probably actually be on camera. That would be good. When you're painting shoulder pad trim, always make sure to get the bottom and the sides, or else your paint job will look stupid. Alright. And this other shoulder pad is white on purpose, but I am going to get the trim. You know, the other thing that a uh, paint scheme doesn't have is the leather color. So I'll have to pick a leather color. Probably go with Snake Bite, if I'm honest. It's a good medium color that'll. won't take away from either of the main colors of this model, but will, uh, will look good still. forget backpack vents. What, these things? Are they gold?
All right, uh, I'm gonna do, oh, this kneecap is gold. Let me do that. Aquila. Good. Let's see what else. What else is gold? Oh, the joints. Oh, 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 gotcha. They're supposed to be silver. I just didn't pay them at all, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Throw some gold in these joints real quick. I'm going to try something with this white in a minute here that I have no idea if it's going to work. And it may completely ruin the model. And if it does, it'll be funny. And if it doesn't, it'll be funny that it worked. So. That'll be interesting. Alright. I'm going to just repaint the, uh, the mohawk real quick. Just gonna use some splintered bone for that. It's pretty close to wraith bone color. Which is what this is primed in, I should say. It's probably a little brighter than wraith bone, but it's okay. As long as I don't get some on the green like I did, then we'll be fine. Really? I'm gonna go back in now and fix that. This is just a. Gotta fix this, then mess this up, then fix that that you messed up, then fix this. Close enough. That'll do. Alright. Go do the leather next. And that will be with snake bite leather. And then I'm going to attempt to not ruin the armor. We shall see. Just painting the belt and the uh, the pouches and stuff with this color. Trying not to knock my paint over. I know this belt buckle is probably made of not the same material as this belt is, but I've been painting them the same color recently. Half to save time and half because I think it looks good, so. 
If I can save time and make something look decent, then I'll do it. All right. So then we have this armor left. And we need to do something with it. It needs to be shaded at least a little bit. We can't just leave the bare primer. So what I'm going to attempt to do is do just that. But I'm just going to dip my brush in my dirty paint water. And then wipe that on the, on the white. And we're going to see what happens. This might work terribly. It might work great. We'll see. You should show them the silver paint scheme at the end just to compare. Oh, okay, yeah, I will. All right, so I got dirty paint water. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> it was working okay, but then I hit the still wet snake bite leather, and that was bad. So let me just correct that real quick. All right, we'll come back to that area because I don't really want to, uh, to deal with that. So I'm just going to do it up here. This is just water, obviously. This is not an ink, so it may dry with terrible tide marks all over everything. Which, in you know, in that case, that's why you don't paint with water. But... It might also be just enough to make it work, so we'll see. <laughs> there is some amount of acrylic in here, obviously, because I've rinsed the paint off in it. Um, so, we'll see what happens. I also have no idea if you're even able to tell if it's working on stream. I can see it's working. Uh, God, I hit that stupid snake bite leather again. I can see it's working here. I'm not sure if it's going to read on stream, though. It might need to be a uh, just an after stream picture thing where it comes through. I think you can see it on the, sh maybe on the shoulder pad. I don't know. I can definitely see the difference, so it's definitely there. It's just funny that it's dirty paint water that's doing it. Oh, I forgot the, that detail on his arm. I'll go back and do that. So that's, oh, no, I gotta get back here. I just gotta be really careful around the, the snake bite leather. And I wasn't careful enough. That's fine. All right. So now just a couple touch-ups, really. Um, oh, I gotta do it on his face. There we go. Alright. So now I'm just gonna go through and do a couple touch-ups. And then do some edge highlights. So I'm just gonna paint this thing on his forearm here, gold. Excellent. This gold here is a little not as vibrant as I'd like. All 
righty. Um, oh yeah, silver. I'm gonna put some silver in the vents here. Did I do the dirty water on the gun? I don't remember. I'm going to do it again. I think I did, but that's all right. I'll do it again. All right, so now I'm going to take some uh, Basilicum Gray and just put it on the silver bits. I'm actually going to put it on the gold in the vents also just to make them a little different. Wonderful. And on the silver there. And then on the gun. And then they're probably still a little wet, but that's all right. I'll put some in here. All right. And then I'm just going to look at my reference photo. I think the eyes are yellow, but I'm just going to check. Uh, yep, the eyes are yellow. Uh, so I'll do them in Avril and Sunset, I guess. My Avril and Sunset is a little drier than I'd like, but that's okay. Just going to lay some of the yellow in there. Wonderful. And I'm just going to get some of the splintered bone back because I messed up on one of the eyes. Purity seal, don't forget. I was actually thinking of leaving the purity seal unpainted, just as a joke. Because I made uh, I made fun of Anthony the other day for not painting his purity seal, and so I was gonna leave mine unpainted to see if he said anything. <laughs> uh, what was I doing? Oh, touching up the face. I might even say like special Easter egg for Anthony Coggins. All right, um. So, oh, I guess I will do the edge highlights now. I'm going to use this splintered bone, I think, since it's already out. I don't know if they're going to show up very well. Shows up enough. So I'm just going to do some basic edge highlights on the armor here. Probably just on the frontward facing edges. Nothing super crazy. This panel up here got all messed up with different colors on it, so I'm just going to make the edge highlight a little larger.
Okay, I guess I'll get the gun here. Just like that. And like that. And then just along the edge here of the shoulder pad. All right. That'll do, well, let me get one more actually here. There we go. All right, and then we'll do brief edge highlights of the green. Um, they're like a super pale green in the picture. Um, Guess I'll use Goss Blaster Green. It's not exactly the color that they are in the picture, but this is a cooler green. He's looking very warm currently, so we'll do the it's edge highlights in green, uh, cool green, and help him out a little bit. You know, do that whole leading edge there in that color. And then just come in and just do the edge highlights over here. Not looking to do every edge of the green in this color. Just pick out some. And I'll do a quick line. The shoulder pad. It's a little thicker than I wanted, but that's okay. I think we'll just stop there. That'll be fine. And then what else needs to be done? Oh, I'm gonna paint the uh, paint the tactical arrow on his white shoulder pad. I'm just gonna do that with some black Templar contrast paint. Let's flip this guy around here. This brush is, I think, on its last leg. I'll use the other brush. So I'm just going to sketch where the basic shape is first. This needs to be widened just a bit here. There we go. And then the most important part of the tactical arrow is getting the point to be super sharp on the tip of the arrow. Which I did not in this first pass. It's okay, we can come at it again. It's better. That's fine. Alright, so there's his tactical arrow. That'll work. And then I 
think I'm going to call him done. I am going to paint the purity seal. I was going to leave it blank just as a joke, but I'm not going to. I can't leave it blank. So I'm going to use some uh, Volupus, I guess. Volupus pink for the, the wax part here. Okay. And then some Skeleton Horde for the parchment part. I think I'm going to put this snake bite, or not snake bite, rather, skeleton horde in just a couple of the joints of the white armor. Just very selectively. I think it'll help a little bit. Just very gently in a couple places. I'm actually going to put it on here also. On this gold right here. Alright, I think that'll do. Um, I'm just going to correct this. This edge highlight I did here is way too thick. So I'm going to correct that real quick. There we go. It's better. Better hidden under there now. All right, so I think that'll be that. Um, I think he came out okay. Uh, let me pull up the the image I was going for again. So there's the image. There's him. You know, not a. Not the exact green, but limiting myself to contrast paint, I think it uh I think it came out pretty pretty okay. So yeah. Alright, so uh that'll be it for this episode. I will be back on the main galactic page on Wednesday, painting something, maybe a dragon, who knows? Not sure yet. And then I'll be back here on Friday painting something. Oh, uh Peyton wanted me to show you the other Marines that of the paint schemes he designed. There's these guys. They don't want to focus, but it's got got this silver and green guy. And this blue and pinkish reddish guy. So there's those two. But yeah. That was the third of the series, I guess. Uh but yeah, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.